Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the kingdom, y'all. You already know it's the king speaking to you. And welcome to part 26 of the Disco Elysium playthrough. You know, we finally got our boy Kim back. Last episode, he was kind of making me mad. I felt like, you know what? I was doing my thing without you, and now you're coming back. You're talking about I'm not even going to get into it. You'd watch the video. If you didn't, go check it out. Let's just get into this next one. Alrighty. Um, yeah. So, let's see here. We're going to keep it, uh... Keep it going. Um, wow. Okay. What, um... Should we go to the... Should we go to the, uh... Smoker on the balcony might not. Let's go, uh, let's go, uh... Yeah. You know what, I feel like... I've been holding it off. I feel like we should go to the church. Um, I feel like we should go to the church, but before I go to the church, I do want to talk to um, the girl that was up by the art um, over this way at the top uh, in the apartment. I do want to speak to her. It's been a little while. Um, I feel like we've done some things that have kind of alluded to her. I think she's Cindy the Skull. Um, if I remember correctly, I could be completely wrong. It's been a little while. Um, so yeah, there she goes up there. Uh, let's go. Uh, let's go talk to her. All right. See if I was right. Hello again, officers. Yeah. Have you come to admire my mural? All right. So here's a new option. It's kind of overlapping the last option here. Do you have any idea what happened to the hanging man's armor? What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Wait, don't you want to know how I knew to ask you? Isn't armor art? Art for the, um, body? Come on, Cindy, just help me out. Not particularly. I want to keep this as brief as possible, you see. I want to return to painting the world red. Piss and fuck told me. Okay, so tell me what you know then. Fine. I don't care about those wannabe skulls. And I don't care about your armor. The wannabe skulls are dear to her. The armor, less so. Isn't armor art? Come on, Cindy, just tell me out here. Oh, all right, Piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Look cute as hell. I don't know why I'm doing this, because I can't get the boots. Since, you know, Kim took the body. Could that girl have been little Lily? It's not a bad place to start. I know a little girl in the village, little Lily. Could have been her, small kid, with giant white armored hands. If you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. Alright, so I think that's the little girl that was in the, uh... Down the coast, who knows something. Did I talk there? Um... I think so, is that the one that was in the house? Um... Damn, can't fast travel from here. Alright. Um, let's, uh, let's go to the church. All right, let's see if Kim has anything interesting to say. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, let's step on in. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Two decks of reel to reel tape spinning on empty. A portable harm and wow sheet tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? Better not be my conversations. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. A radio computer. And it's turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Oh shit. See, I should fuck, I should have did it without him. I should have did it without him. Yeah, but what is a strange machine? Wait, let me just investigate it. You're right, let's get out of here. A radio computer. We have one down at the station. No, I don't know how to operate it or what it's used for. Let's go. A quaint little box of radio waves. 
you see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no, it was already glowing and now it's also making a sound? It's probably some alien Seo-like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good morning, Fortress Epsilon on San Bruns. This is the East Insulindian Hobbit Station 1. Please repeat, is this the personal log? What's the personal log? Fortress accent sounds familiar. What are you, a machine, or are you alive? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. The filament you have inserted into the core. You mean that glowing thing with the tape on it that says log, February, March? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Is this the personal log? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Uh -oh. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Um, password. I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Is it my birthday? This is the please. Please open the thing. I'll rather pass I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? I will come back Goodbye, to that. Fortress accident. She says her voice disappears into a world of static. The keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent clay. Nothing happens. Alright. We'll come back after we get ourselves that password. Kim just gonna have to ride or die with me. Cause we we investigate. We got some shoes here. Mask of bangers, red brogues. Um plus one in empathy is someone else's shoes. These dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white on white flower mo motive sewn on the tongue. The, the toe caps are still dusty from lying in the church. Oh yeah, let's put those on. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm looking like I'm ready for church now. A spider has spun its web around this wood carved pillar. A cracked pane of glass. Colorful. The silence in this part of the church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. Wait, I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow. If not blotted out, outright. Truly unusual. Sounds like the pail. How do I know what the pail sounds like? From recordings. Of the far pale. You've heard them. We all have. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can, stomp your feet and clap your hands. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total. Oh boy, Kim gonna be angry about this one. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. It's unnerving. What's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? Almost nothing and it's beginning to worry me. Not really, but it's extraordinary. I've never experienced anything like this. I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. Maybe the church was designed this way to prevent boisterous activity, singing and dancing on its premises. Maybe they wanted to discourage singing and dancing. It's probably nothing, just our imagination. Whatever it is, it's definitely real. Something odd is happening here on this. Hmm. Could be. He doesn't seem entirely convinced, though. 
Let's look up into the bell tower. The rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. Try to see beyond the shadows. What if I don't want to know what's up there? The silence. The darkness. They've enveloped you as in a cocoon. You cannot move anymore. Relax. It'll be okay. Oh boy, here we go. Oh. Too dark for me. Still got the party eyes. Not good for seeing. Just darkness without end. It makes your head spin. Filled with vague shapes of woodwork. The sense of a great height. Try to make out something. Anything. There's nothing. You're dizzy and disoriented as you see dark and more dark rising. Officer, what are you looking at? He follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is that you are seeing. Blink. What the hell is that? You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. A Spider-Man? It's possible to talk to it. What the hell? <clears throat> they were right. Oh, I can level up. Um, wow. Should I, uh, should I unlock another thought? I got a bunch of them. Um, should I be the regular law official? Um, uh, the Jamrock Shuffle. Wow. Um, let us... You know, since we just messed... Yeah, actually, I'm lying. Let me, uh... Let me be the smart thing. Let me look at my map. Let me see what kind of white checks we have so that I can maybe retry some of them. Um, or be better with them. Um... Wow. Uh, interfacing, interfacing, composure. Um, perception. Suggestion, suggestion. Charm men and women play the puppet master. All right, let's uh put our suggestion up. <clears throat> that dude's bothering me. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. Oh shit! Hey you, bro. Is that a man? Looks more like part of the carpentry of the building came alive and is now studying you intently. See, we're in closer now. A crab man. Oh, he is. Hey, who's there? The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But what? don't worry. Everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. That's not how you greet somebody. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking mists in River Show. <clears throat> right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that box. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. Yeah, I guess I have a bit of a problem and it's been getting out of hand lately, but... I'm a policeman. I need to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about alcohol use. Oh, hell no. Run away. Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I can smell the control all the way over here. Doing just fine, thank you. Okay, fine, I'm struggling, but you don't need to lecture me. I know what I need to do. You don't know me. You don't know what I've been through. This conversation is making me uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. I was like you once. Just dragging my feet to the next bar. Shit was dark, Holmes. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. 
All right, don't take his side, Cam. I'm gonna need you to be my friend. If the lieutenant agrees, then maybe, just maybe, you should pay attention. For some reason, I feel like you have a point there. Who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? What is this shit? You know, alcohol is central to my identity. If I wouldn't drink, I'd just be me. This is stupid. I don't even know what this is. It's all well and good, but we need to talk about the unlicensed occupation of ecclesiastic property. Don't trust me. Trust the mother. I'm only the messenger, Holmes. His voice echoes in the cold air of the church. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. He sways gently on the beams, waiting for you to take it all in. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. Tis not an act to my liege. Save him perchance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. He must be the crab man. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. Do you know where the other spooker is? One of the strange machines around you. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's really more like a spider. If you're not a crab, what are you? Sorry, you just weren't moving like a human. Hey, it's your neighbors who came with the name, not me. I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Wait, did you also carve all those sculptures? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. Rub your chin. You've got some nice curves going there. Squint your eyes. There seems to be a tad derivative. You're promoting the objectification of women with your reactionary depiction of female bodies. Honestly, I don't get it. All these figures look half finished. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. Who were you before you became a crab man and a woodcarver? I was in a gang way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. So many people losing their memory, a certain portent of doom. I lost my memory too, and it haunts me. I lost my memory too, but I like it. It's like I got a, uh, like I get to create a whole new me, start again from scratch. So you used to be in a gang, but you don't really remember it? Sounds convenient. No, man. You gotta let that shit go. Then the mother's light touch will fill you with rapture. Do you remember your name, sir? The lieutenant is not particularly interested in this information. He's just trying to assert some control over the conversation. Tiago's my name, but those syllables don't mean much to me these days. My name isn't just your identity, but also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows, your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. My name's Harry. Extend your hand for a greeting. My name sets me apart from my fellows. How often do you meet a Raphael and Brocious Casto? My name is Harry Ed Dubois. My place in the world is Lieutenant W. Freiter. I don't do names either. Names are out. I don't care what mine is. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. He sounds melancholy saying this, his limbs a mere shadow below the ceiling. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it for purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Who's this mother of silence you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, I said. She is one who can be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me, but I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes, and no one ever will. What will happen once you drink from this per perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? 
You know a thing or two about that. I still don't understand what you're doing in this church. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. You should sing for me, the superstar cop. Point your thumbs at yourself. Doesn't really make sense for you to sing if she's the mother of silence. Nah, singing is good. We should all sing a bit more. <laughs> I don't mean literal singing, Holmes. This is the mother of silence we're talking about. It's the singing of a burning heart. You may be thinking, but fire crackles. No, Holmes. That's the material that's burning. The flames themselves are without sound. How did you even find this place, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here, back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. Been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. Eh? It didn't belong to me. Are these your shoes lying around here? Show them the red brogues you found. I think they were. A long time ago. What am I now, boy? I had to shed them like skins to get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. Well, good, because it's too late. They're already on my feet. These shoes look pretty dapper, actually. Yeah, 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 these shoes are fresh. That's why they got put on. You sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful, those words. He is lying. Not to you, to his very own self. Faith is a kind of drug. I guess you have a point. Let's agree to disagree. I was being insensitive, sorry, let's move on. I heard that before, Way. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think, when's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover, regretting what you did last night? There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. Get you have a point. I agree, disagree. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. All right, I had other the questions. The figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. You've been here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. He responds, his voice suddenly flat. Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Wait, do they have reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Though we used to. A long time ago. So what do you think about the nightclub that is? Why not? They wouldn't bother me nothing. Well, let's get the party eyes I'm going. Way up there. And vibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Might even be nice to have some company. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Do you know where the other spooker is? Other spooker? Oh. Esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. The Aita is grandma. Wait, so there is another person living in the church? And it's a viejita? Right, thanks. Let's see if I can find her some other way. No. I just call her viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. And you don't know where she is? That's what I said, Holmes. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you got nothing else to tell me? How she looks, what she does, who is she? I'm afraid not, S.A. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... He shrugs. Search through her radio computer. Have you by any chance heard the vieja... The viejita say the password to a radio computer. Too many times, S.A. You need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. 
I'm doing a survey of passwords and passcodes identifying regional trends in the interest of public safety, of course. Don't sweat it, Vato. The password is afterlife death. What do you think of Jesus? That? Makes me almost pity La Nilita Pequeña when I hear it. Seriously? Okay, then thanks. I think we're done here, Esse. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Kim, I'm gonna need you to just relax. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? No, art is arrogant blowhards. Why am I getting this? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Would I fit into the art world, I mean? Have you looked in the mirror lately? To be honest, you have the exact features of the modern artist, with that wild hair and those clothes. Perhaps you should try to write poetry someday and critique architecture. Hold on, is architecture also art? Of course not. It's autism, box drawing, masturbation with a ruler and a sextant or whatever. What? You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Wait, what about music? Is it art? Only the most experimental kind. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes. You seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, but don't I have to be 100% cop to get the case finished and all that? Being so indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Okay. 50% art critic is what's needed to free me from road repetition. So be it. Exactly. Let's get in there. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals off the street. You must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery. The trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. Interesting. Yep, so actual art degree. Waste land of reality. Alright. Okay, yeah, so we can break back into uh, are those pants? Oh, the scarf. Oh, you're already about to be about to look like my man, you're taking this whole identity. Where is it? Plus one pain threshold. Bangers don't cry. This huge red scarf is still dusty from lying in the church. A subtle red on red embroidery embellishes it with cocky roosters and mesk floral motives. Plus two drama. I kind of like the drama. I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to keep the, the bow tie for now. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. Mm-hmm. That was, oh, it was the bird. I thought something crawled on the floor. How do I... Okay. So I guess we should go back over to this computer now that we know that the password is life after death. Is there anything else for me to observe before I hit that computer again, though? It doesn't look like anything's popping up. The only thing highlighted is Kim, so... Alright, let's check this computer out. The machine's keyboard is still... Okay, press play again. Let's try this again. I think I may have the right password. Good. Please repeat the password. Uh, after life death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Okay. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident sounds familiar. The company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. 
You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And what's that, this interactive call and radio game? Any other questions? Um, she didn't answer the question. What are you, a machine, or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old, and my name is Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people in our role. Baronet. Yvonne, my partner here tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They're merely cautious. It's my job to protect the filaments as a password repeater at the East in Cylindian Station. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk all day to people like you over a warm cup of tea. That's why she does this. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for you for this accident. The company on one moment. Uh, that's not bad. Let's even say this. Wow, so conceptual. I wouldn't know. I'm only here for passwords. Any okay, I'm just leaving back to that. Thanks, but I'm finished. Goodbye, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still. It. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Read the printout. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. Fourth of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. Read the second entry. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See, even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? He steps on a wire running on the ground, inspecting it with his boot. 8th of February. 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design. Ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean... They're programmers. The writers, though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Data loss. Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed, and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi, who are all these people? Her friends? Colleagues? She must be quite educated if she knew how to set up all this machinery. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. 
Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what. Also, oh, now you're interested, Kim. This person here in the first place. Now you interested, huh? 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment. But I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Is she talking about? The lieutenant looks was right toward the silence. 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? What could it be? Look at the water basins behind you. The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter. But now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. She must be describing a seal. A girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. A new two meter aux cable. Noodles. Crackers. Ping ping energy drinks. Water. Toothpaste. Gum. Also, some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. Oh no. A string makes straight for the radio computer. Uh, I wasn't doing anything. Just minding my own business. Um, I'm, I'm welcome home. Um, I talked to Tiago. He was nice. And, uh, yeah. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Damn, she starts typing, doesn't even look at us. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. Oh, um, she glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds. The machine reboots. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. We're here in a side case representing certain music venue organizers. We're not just breaking in, I'm pursuing them seriously, it's searching for my lost identity. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whir back to life. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. Okay, well we'll give her a second to- oh, it's auto-saving. I'll give her a second to reboot whatever she needs to reboot. Let's do that. Uh, we'll do a quick uh, quick run around uh, the whoop de woo here. Whoa, great place you got going on here, um, lady. Um, I'm sure with your expertise that it is booted up by now, so let's have a conversation. What is it? The woman is still hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by the purring machine. I didn't break anything, did I? Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? No, you just printed out my personal lock and wasted some paper. Does not look like a big loss to her. Sorry, but who are you? I am Sona Lukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. If you're not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. She turns back to the terminal. Did she say? Over 16 years of experience? She must have started programming when she was still a teenager. Have you seen the Crab Man? Why are there so many machines in this place? What are you doing in an abandoned church? How do you feel about anodic dance music? No. Nope. But you know he's around? Yes. He's seen you? He must have seen you. Sounds like you're not worried about him all. And? 
And the crab man had seen you. Okay, it's probably not a big deal. I don't care. I don't care about crab man. <laughs> she apparently looks up now tinkering with the machine's printer. Wow. She really doesn't. Not afraid, this one. I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. What are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Working on what? Could you... Could you just... Shh. For a moment? Or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. It's not just rudeness. It really is hard to concentrate on whatever she needs to do. And you're not helping. What are those bowls of water over there? They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Great. She dwells back into the glowing terminal. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? There's a hint of amusement in her eyes. I'm a police officer, it's my job to ask questions. You're occupying a public space and need to know what you're doing here. There have been complaints from the neighbors. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says, ready to stand her ground. What research? I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is the hole connected to the data loss in your journal? A hole in the world, what does that mean exactly? Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She suddenly absorbs in a conversation, waiting for your answer. That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. Hold on a moment. Does it mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it? I can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. I don't know. I'm not here for some science. I just want to solve a murder so I can go home. I don't know. Are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? You measure it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. Ha! Huh. Hydro transducers. So that's what those water basins are. Devices for recording sound through water. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. She grows silent staring at her circle of basins. Looks like some ancient ritual. Do you have any idea where the hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch black heights above, but without much success. Strange things may flourish in the dark. Why there? There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. This is where the Crab Man lives. I know. You don't think Crab Man might somehow be responsible here? No, I don't. She sounds mildly annoyed by this line of questioning. Her hands type in hundreds of commands into the machine. You said that the research isn't going well. Why not? Because it's just trial and error, trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. That's all I wanted to know about the scary two millimeter hole in the world. For now. Great. Thanks. Uh, how do you feel about anodic dance music? What? I hate it. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened? What are you, 40? It's the future of dance music. Same here, it just doesn't connect here. Tap on your heart. Not like disco does, anyway. Okay, wow, that was quick. Why do you hate it? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it. But to a sober mind, it just sounds like uninspired rough within. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Right, right, but how do you feel about a club for anodic, anodic dance music? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It 
It's not a nightclub they want to build here. What do they want to build then? Take a guess, why don't you? A youth center would be pretty nice. A petting zoo, a place for animals. Maybe some community space to help the elderly. I'm still convinced they want to establish a nightclub for analog dance music. They said it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up and coming entrepreneurs with you. Thanks. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. That's okay, I don't need you. Alright, I'll let you work in peace now. Hmm. So tell Andre about Sona's thoughts on the nightclub. What's uh what's in here? Anything? White, silver, and apricot fails. The young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval faced and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Okay. Her knees touch the floor. The <laughs> floorboards are hard and cold. There, you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. The world is silent. But for the creaks and cracks of the massive wooden structure behind you, it covers you from the wind outside. In the darkness, you sense her eyes on you, inspecting you with their multicolored glass, as if you're a bug under a microscope. The woman looks down at you, kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You? No, she doesn't care about you. She only cares about her shiny sovereign's orb and her silk robes and get into the aerodrome on time to leave. It's compassion. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Do the same as you get up. Your fingertips touch your chest. That's right, me and, me and Kim are praying. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. This is Dolores Day. Yes. I wasn't sure before, but this must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. You know the place? It's a minor landmark. Not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they call them. The seven sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? A pang of guilt? The lieutenant is leaving something out. Do you know why I was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I don't remember being here. I am pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I try not to pry into extra district matters. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Kim, are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm. I didn't think you were spiritual. 
It's not spiritual, it's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. Okay. How do I know this is the mother of humanism? Despite the nice. damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still. And will haunt you forever as it haunts all men. Wait, what exactly is an innocence? I've heard of the system. The highest category of historic individual. An embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? More. An innocence is elected to office by the founding party. A precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built to accommodate an authentic rule should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. They are inevitabilities. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated. Packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event. A sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Is one in office now? No, we are alone. Okay, when did she roll? 300 years ago. In the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi, she is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel and the connected world. What else do I know about her? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene Le Navigateur, Queen of Seren. Modern day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty, draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this, dwarfed? Where is this coming from? The past. It's a silo of sadness, fermenting. You should keep away. No, you must know. Right, better not to go poking. Terribly, women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time. A messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow. wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. Mm. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. 
You're right, time to heed the warning. Now, was there something bad about her? I want to know. You already do. Although she's often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day. Constantly surrounded by her thelias, she was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the instances. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. What happened? The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerated inter-secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Margrit were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce this subtle terror is part of her iconography. So I'm getting close to my recording time limit, so I gotta kinda get through this quickly. Yeah, you freed her. You've stood there for over five minutes. Lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the what church. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? Oh boy, I don't have all the time for this. Um... That she is. A great sacred piece. I wonder what we are doing here. In this church, I mean. The coast in general. We shouldn't linger. This isn't a good place to get lost in. All right, we'll come back next time for the for the calculus. Uh, so, like I said, we're getting right up on the uh, the recording time limit here. So, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you come back for part twenty seven of our Disco Elysium playthrough. Till then, y'all. Peace out.